Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be finding out why Wonderlands failed, or at least didn't meet expectations. Now, there are a number of reasons for that, but I think a lot can be drawn from comparing the first six months of Borderlands 3 to the treatment Tiny Tina's Wonderlands received, and that's what we'll be doing today. It's important to reflect and through that reflection get some answers on why these games performed like they did and it's the perfect comparison to make. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video or subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one and make sure to let me know in the comments why you think Tiny Tina's Wonderlands fell short and let's crack into it. But before we do, Raid Ship No, an article was released a few days ago after I recorded this praising the success of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and shattering its critical and commercial goals. It goes on to state that new experiences are already underway which could swing its fate with the likes of some story DLC, but I feel it's too late for that. You may think it's strange for me to be calling it a failure and Gearbox to see it as a success, and you can believe who you'd like, but at the end of the day it all comes down to how you define success. Wonderlands may have not failed in dollar signs, but it has in player time, it struggled to captivate an audience beyond the campaign like we're used to seeing, it failed the fans, and we'll be finding out why today. Both Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and Borderlands 3 launched to good reviews, despite Wonderlands being an obviously smaller game with less weapons and a shorter campaign, it had a lot going for it. The story was much better than what we got with Borderlands 3, it looked great, ran much more smoothly, and had the first ever recognisable endgame loop in the franchise's history with the Chaos Chamber. We were all set for a season marmalade packed full of content, something we had grown accustomed to over the years. However, after the first DLC landed, Coiled Captors, just a month after release on April 21st, players would quickly realise that that wouldn't be the case. Regardless of the advertised nature of the content within the season pass, story DLCs or not, there's no doubt players were expecting more. I mean, the skip dude completed it in just 7 minutes, which is shorter than the time it takes to just enter the casino in the Handsome Jackpot DLC, which is Borderlands 3's first DLC of 6 across 2 years. That's not to mention that the enemies within called Captors were reskins of existing enemies, some even with missing names, or maybe that was the name of the sharks in there. Most of Tiny Tina's Wonderland's DLC content was locked behind an arbitrary time frame which forced you to complete it multiple times across a 4 week period if you wanted to get everything that was offered and it's not like you got it either. Spinning the wheel was often more rewarding than the final boss fight and no one wants to spend their time doing that. If I did I'd watch Wheel of Fortune. The DLCs were something different which isn't a bad thing but it felt like the effort levels dropped way down from what we were used to. If Borderlands 3 started on the 10th rung of the ladder, Wonderlands barely had started on the 1st and they didn't get much better. If you've been watching the channel over the last few weeks, you may have realised how important post launch support is for a Borderlands type game. The launch product is like the bread to a sandwich, where lettuce, tomato, cheese, bacon and Nutella are added to it afterwards to make it even tastier. Maybe not Nutella. They depend on updates to refine the game and DLCs which expand them. Borderlands 3 is the best example of that, and unfortunately Wonderlands is the worst. It's sad to say that, but it's true, and I've been holding off on this video in hopes that things might improve, and they haven't. Especially with Tales from the Borderlands now seemingly the focus, I feel Wonderlands won't realise its potential, which is a real shame, a huge disappointment. If you draw a graph of how Borderlands 3 and Wonderlands got better over time, Wonderlands would, in my opinion, start higher, increase a little bit and then pretty much flatline, whereas Borderlands 3 would break through the roof thanks to 2 years of fantastic support. It's pretty crazy for the game with the most recognisable endgame to fare so poorly, and it kind of proves that a defined endgame experience isn't what the franchise relies upon. Being the smaller game, Wonderlands needed post launch support the most if it was going to get close to the depth seen in Borderlands 3, but because it didn't, once you reach the end game, there's little to do outside of the Chaos Chamber, and it being one of the fail points of this game is kind of ironic. It was only 4.5 months until the entire season pass worth of content was released for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, 
which is an incredibly small window. In contrast, for Borderlands 3, it would take pretty much bang on a year for Season Pass 1 to be completed, and there were constant updates within that time frame to fill in the gaps. There's no doubt I expected Wonderlands to have a lot more legs than it did, I think many of us thought that, but those legs kind of stopped at the knees. To have nothing to look forward to after just 4 months feels incredibly strange. They are still releasing hotfixes weekly with updates and events here and there, but there's nothing big on the cards to keep interest, and as soon as that became apparent, I started losing hope for this game. I feel like I'm standing in the rain waiting for it to clear, but the only hope of things getting better is for Mary Poppins to swoop down and give me her umbrella. Super Keller Fragile Tupperware. I believe that game seriously benefit from a roadmap, and we had a couple of incredible ones for Borderlands 3. They let us know exactly what was to come and when, kept us playing, and kept us looking towards the bright future ahead, and when I don't see that after a while of not much happening, I start to think that there is no future, and I started thinking that much sooner than I would have liked to with Wonderlands. The writing was in the sand after Coiled Captors, and I'm interested to hear when you guys started losing hope for this game. Let me know in the comments. Expecting Wonderlands to get Borderlands 3's treatment was a lot to ask, and I didn't expect it. I was thinking a year of support similar to something like the pre-sequel of Borderlands 1, but it feels like the focus has already shifted. Within the first 6 months of Borderlands 3, we would see the Bloody Harvest, Meliwon Takedown, the Handsome Jackpot DLC, and the Broken Hearts Day event, which increased the level cap to 53, with Guns, Love, and Tentacles to come 6 weeks later, alongside level 57. During that time, Mayhem 4 was introduced, as well as a number of quality of life changes, and dedicated loot pools for bosses. On the other hand, Wonderlands would obviously see its four DLCs, which peaked at the third one, and introduced a new class with the fourth and final, released on August 11th. The max chaos level would be raised to 35 from the starting point of 20, and then grow to 50 not long afterwards. Of course it received the expected fixes and adjustments early on, and pretty much every base game legendary weapon has been buffed at some point, except launches still but the vast majority of them still somehow feel like they are missing something. The game is missing something too, as mentioned before, Borderlands 3 got a takedown Halloween event and Valentine's Day event within its first 6 months, but Wonderlands hasn't gotten anything of note, aside from maybe boss rush and other things done to the Chaos Chamber. Even continuing with the Mirrors of Mystery format, there could still have been something else, some free content drop to go along with them to enhance the player experience, but they chose not to do that. The focus is clearly the Chaos Chamber, it's been that way for a long time, and a lot of people were quick to realise that the end game can't be entirely staked on it. It's more of a backbone, a support beam for post campaign activities, which I feel it does well, but when that's the only thing you have, and I were required to do it anyway to advance in Chaos levels, it runs dry extremely fast, faster than we expected. What it desperately needs is respawnable bosses and a thinning out of the loot pools to try and break the cycle of chaos room after chaos room. Something to stop us from constantly spinning the wheel of fate after grinding crystals in a mirror of mystery. After I completed the game that is how I would spend my time farming, and although they reduced the chance of non chaotic gear dropping, it's still the same grind just with better chances. Borderlands 3 did get that exact treatment after 9 months, so we could see something for Wonderlands, but by that point it'll be too little too late, we're probably already there. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands was the perfect platform to build a lasting and memorable game, but for me, it doesn't look like they were willing to put in the effort like they had for every other game. I don't know, I haven't really thought about this until now, but I am pretty disappointed with the way Wonderlands has staggered along. That's on me though, I need to keep those expectations low boy, but I want people to remember what a good DLC is, what good content and support is, and Borderlands 3 had a ton of that. Wonderlands didn't receive anything close to the quality of post launch content and effort Borderlands 3 did, and that is a big reason why Tiny Tina's Wonderlands failed in the eyes of so many. It's almost impossible to tell the kind of support a game will have after it's launched, and all Borderlands games received story DLCs at the very least. Wonderlands was the first and hopefully last to go another direction. 
to have a game come out that doesn't have that is concerning when you look at potential content for Borderlands 4. But I feel with the backlash Wonderlands received with its DLCs, although not recognised, that option has been explored and hopefully gone for good. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned how Wonderlands was supported in comparison to Borderlands 3 and how that played a big part in its failure. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.